how this training, the SGA training on human rights impacts on the community. Uh, when I came in 2014, uh, we used to have a lot of complaints from guards from their home. Their wives would come, following them at the place of work, saying, oh, they have not left them money for food, or oh, they have beaten them, or they have abused them in one way or the other. And uh, that obviously became a concern for us because our work is security, not community <laughs> liaison. So we embraced this uh, training from ICOCA uh, on human rights in our training. And we also brought in people from the police uh, to about community policing. And uh, this became our norm. And slowly by slowly, we've seen those complaints reducing. And I can say in the last two years or so, we don't receive such complaints as such. And uh, obviously an indicator that it has really impacted on the communities. Three tiers in the case of Anglo Gold Ashanti Gator Gold Mine uh, is that uh, they have their own in-house security. Then they have us as contracted security. And then they also have the Tanzania police uh, who are deployed in areas that are seen to be risky. And on top of that, we have a community, uh, we call them uh, community-based security. These are individuals who have been uh, selected from the community surrounding the mine to provide information, like intelligence information, because uh, they live among the would-be intruders. And therefore, if these intruders were planning to intrude, then these people would get intelligence of, about it and they would transmit the intelligence to Anglo Gold security team and ourselves so that we could take mitigating measures. How they are selected and how they are trained, in the case of uh, Gator Gold Mine, uh, Gator Gold Mine has got uh, a security department and they have one manager whom, who is responsible for community policing. So this manager organizes all the logistics, uniforms, training, uh, communication equipment, how they are paid and all that. And he also interfaces with the local community leaders when they are, being, when they are selecting the individuals who will uh, act as uh, community policing uh, uh, guards. Yeah. At the Gator Gold Mine, the police are, are deployed there because they, the police use uh, firearms. And they, are fire, they use firearms with lethal, with, with lethal ammunition. For us, we use firearms, but with non-lethal ammunition. So where, the, where we are unable to contain a situation because of the limitations that we have, then the police are called in. Because the police have the right to use some sort of force. For us, we are restrained in terms of use of lethal force. So uh, the police comes in and uh, takes over. But uh, on day-to-day -day operations, we don't interface at all, apart from when there is a situation that needs their intervention. Yeah. So in most cases, uh, st uh, incidences of intrusion, we will have scared them, scared the intruders before there's a requirement for the police to intervene. Yeah, for Gator Gold Mine, very few, very few. We've had very few instances when we had to call in the police to quell. 
How do we build trust between the security guards and the local community? Number one is we recruit from among the local community. So the local community is aware that the security guards in the mine are one of their own, one and the same. So uh, first of all, they feel proud that SGA as a company has provided a source of income for one of their own. And if they have plans to intrude, they go easy because it means that they will be con confronting one of their own. And we have emphasized that very much uh, when we are recruiting because we uh, advertise lo locally within and when they come we give them priority apart from positions that will need expertise we will always recruit from the community the local community and that uh, some sort of gives them a leeway to operate without much threat, as if they were people from other areas coming to operate there.